Okay. Look at the camera, bless him. Look at that. Marvellous. Everyone say, Miracle Grow! Miracle Grow. <laughs> Others are available. Baby Bio! That's it. Oh, I won't mind. <laughs> right Absolutely. We're talking, I've got something in here, shut me here. We're talking low maintenance gardening. You just have to put it with us.
bite. So if I get this one and I open up her mouth and I put my finger in, I'm asking for a good one. And yet she's not biting at all. And that's because these have to sign a contract that says they can only bite me if I bite them first. And all I do is I spend lots of time with them. I handle them a lot. Uh oh, we have an escaping. You usually head to people with very smelly, sweaty feet and he's heading towards you. you know. Here we go, bring it back. And so these guys aren't allowed to bite me, they can bite a rabbit, I don't mind that, but I don't want them to bite me. I've been diagnosed with a very, very rare allergy. Apparently I'm allergic to pain. It hurts me. And the doctor says I should avoid it. So by handling these a lot when they're tiny, much of the thing, without thinking about it, I keep bringing my hand over the head like this. I'm not trying to hit them, I'm not patting them on the head or anything. I'm getting them used to this big pink thing coming out of the sky. Just got to keep picking them up. I don't want to be frightened of that. If they're frightened of that hand, then they're going to run away from it. I want them to come to me so that when I finish my day's work, I can pick them up and take them home so that they can have a meal and so can I. So, the other question I get asked a lot as well, and this morning I started keeping count. I lost count at 100, but lots of people ask me the same question, mainly women for some strange reason. They want to know if I ever put a ferret down my trousers. <laughs> Let me put it this way, ladies. I would never put a ferret down my trousers for one very good reason. There is no space. Moving on quickly. All right, let, let's show you what we really do with these guys. Because these guys we use, let's say, for hunting uh, rabbits. But how do they hunt? Well, what they do, I will show you in two minutes time. But let me tell you first of all a little bit about these biters. Here is a garden show. I'm sure that you are keen gardeners and you will probably hate these guys. These aren't real, you'd be pleased to know. And get these in your garden, you know, that for some perverse reason, they think that the most expensive plants in your garden are the tips. They tend to be the ones that they eat. And so it's a bit of a nuisance for you. You're losing a bit of money. Imagine you're a farmer and you've not got a couple of dozen of these around, but you've got thousands on your land. We know there are approximately 100 million rabbits in England and Wales at the moment. Probably a few more because we all know what rabbits do in their spare time, but that's the latest figure that we've got. Five rabbits eat as much as one sheep, so you work out how much damage that's doing to agriculture. And we pay for it. Every time you go to buy a loaf, packet of cornflakes, whatever, we're paying for the rabbit damage. So farmers need to control the rabbits. They have a legal obligation to do that, and they tend to call on people like myself. And uh, we go all around the country, quite literally, from the north of Scotland down to the south coast of England, and we try to control the rabbits. I say control, better word is management. We don't clear them, it's impossible. No matter how good you think you are, there's always a couple of rabbits get away and that uh, they start multiplying pretty darn quickly. Females, when a female rabbit finds that she's pregnant, she moves away from the warren just a few metres, digs one hole under the ground, we call it a stop. When it's dug to her satisfaction, she then rips out all the fur from her stomach and lines it, gives birth to the babies, and 30 minutes later, she has left them. And before she leaves them, she fastens up the end of the tunnel, she walls them in, to try and keep out weasels and stoats and foxes. And she only goes back once a day. Please don't try this, ladies. you will be in serious trouble if you do. But they go back once a day, break down the wall, go down to the bottom of the, the burrow, the stop where the uh, kittens are. The female lays down. The kittens have to get on the milk bar pretty quickly because 30 minutes later, she's gone again. And that's how it goes on until those kittens are developed, their ears are open, their eyes are open, and they're out running around then she just leaves them to their own accord. So we need to know where that warren is because this is where the breeding stock is. So they're sticking the odd one or two from the outside. We need to take the breeding stock to reduce the numbers. So we have to find that warren. Once we've found it, we have to know before we start working if there's any rabbits in there because that warren could have been standing empty for days, weeks, months, years. So what you do first of all is you use your eyesight. Use what I used to refer to as common sense. I think as you get to be a grumpy old man like me, 
you realise common sense isn't quite so common. But, to me, if I look into a warren and I can see all the holes are full of dead leaves and cobwebs, it's not used. So I'm wasting my time. Back on with it. And we can work out what we're going to do with the rabbits because the job of these ferrets is only about one thing. And it's not what some people think. I was at the show yesterday down in Staffordshire. A guy came up, I've known him for quite a few years, he came up and he was really, really pleased with himself, broke the box, ferret and he said, look at this ferret, he says, it's the best trained ferret in the world. I said, tell me about it. He says, brilliant. He says, all I do, I take him out, I put it to the side of the rabbit warren, she runs underground, she kills the rabbit, brings it out, drops on her feet, fetches another one, and keeps going until she's got all the rabbits. I said, that is good, it's not the best. Because little Impy here, come on Impy, she is much better. What she does, she runs underground, she kills the rabbits, she drags them out, she cuts some skins and cuts them in a pie, and puts on a French maid outfit and serves it up full silver service. And if you believe one, please believe the other, because they're both total twaddle. So that smell, when it's going through the warren, makes the rabbits come running out. When they come out, that's our turn to do a little bit of work. These, I never make any bones about it, these guys do 90% of the work, I just do a little tiny bit at the end. And my job is when those rabbits come out that have been driven out by the ferrets, I've got to stop them some way. And one of the ways I use, if I'm only after a couple of rabbits for the pot, not if I'm after catching a lot of rabbits, and you'll understand why in a minute, is I use this toy. And anybody here will understand that boys like toys, and the only difference between big boys and little boys is the toys are a bit more expensive. And this is one of my favorite toys. It is not the gun that's dangerous. It's the person who uses it who can make it dangerous. In the same way, if I picked up this plastic bucket and ran around hitting people on the head, that would be dangerous. Not what I should have said that. Someone will ban them. Never mind. Move on quickly. So this is the gun. One of the things you've got to do with the gun is be safe. You might have noticed as I took it out of its sleeve, its cover, I broke it in half. That gun is not loaded, but you don't know that. But it cannot fire now, even if it was but I am going to fire it. So I'm going to reach in my bag here. The cartridges that I'm using today are ones I've made myself. Uh, the organizers asked me to leave lead out. So the only thing that shoots out the end of this is toilet paper, not being used, guys. So if you want to take it home and use it, please uh, do that uh, with my compliments. So I'm going to put those in. There's also not much powder in, so it's not going to be that loud when it goes off. Now you see me put cartridges in. Before I can fire that, I've got to close it. And this is where a lot of people go drastically wrong. This is where accidents occur. Because typically, the guy will stand with a gun like this, and he'll close it by bringing up the barrels like that. If I do that, guys, you guys over there have got a loaded gun pointing at you. And if that was me, I would be very, very upset. I was a soldier. I know what it's like to be on the wrong end of one of these things. Because parents aren't used to noise. They like a quiet life. Are you ready then? So here goes the first shot. The rabbit comes out, and you take aim. And you shoot it. And this has got a second barrel because very often you see more than one at once and you shoot it again. And then you open the gun, like so, and the empty cartridges flirt out.